we want to uh, uh, welcome you to our um, midweek service uh, for Beacon Baptist Church. Um, uh, trust uh, you're having a good week. Um, uh, this is our extended uh, uh, coronavirus uh, version of um, Wednesday night church. And, um, uh, you know, I got to say this uh, right off the bat. I am uh, very impressed with the guys that have been leading the different Bible studies. Um, uh, Joe Severson, uh, last week for the Sunday school lesson, I don't get to use here very many of them, but he did an excellent job. And, and uh, uh, Pastor Mike, Pastor um, uh, Joe, uh, Pastor Aaron, um, they're doing excellent studies um, uh, just for, for midweek studies, and, and my hat goes uh, out to them, as well as uh, Pastor's been done, doing a tremendous job with uh, the book of Hosea. Um, but tonight, um, I want to direct our attention just a, uh, a couple of simple thoughts, and um, uh, we're going to a very familiar passage in Philippians chapter 3, and um, uh, the, the verses that I cover will probably, many of you will be able to quote, but um, uh, let's just have a brief word of prayer to get into our study. Our Father, we do pray that you would be with us tonight. Um, thank you for the word of God that um, uh, anchors our soul. Uh, Lord, we thank you that, uh, especially in a time of uncertainty, um, we can truly hold to your word um, for our wisdom, for our confidence, uh, God, for our hope. And um, uh, Lord, this is something that the world does not have. Um, you have given us uh, your word, it's truth and uh, it's truth for all time. Uh, so Lord, as we look into this passage, we pray that you would just um, uh, bless our heart with the truths that are here. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, the uh, verse that I want to start out with is uh, Philippians chapter 3 and verse 7. And uh, Paul writes, and he simply says, but what things were gain to me, uh, those I counted loss for Christ. Um, uh, it reminds us that the uh, first part of this chapter has to do with Paul um, uh, speaking of all of his um, uh, accolades, uh, the um, accomplishments that he had. And he was a Pharisee of the Pharisee. He was a, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, um, zealous, uh, persecuting the church. Um, he was all out for uh, the job he thought he was doing for, for God at that time and uh, until he recognized that he was not working for God at all uh, until he met Christ. But um, uh, there he had the prestige of the world. He had the uh, prosperity of the world. Um, but God would... Um, have to take all of that away so that he could meet Christ and so he could actually know Christ better. Um, and in this passage, we recognize that um, had Paul kept uh, kept hold on those things that uh, uh, were so significant in his life, he would not have known Christ in the depths that he knew him. But um, in stripping that away, um, it caused his heart to be uh, deeply uh, enmeshed with the intimacy of Christ. Um, and we have that primary thought in this passage. I, um, I was reading this passage on Sunday morning, not knowing I was going to be doing it for a devotion. Um, uh, and I was called on and said, can you do the devotion this week? And I said, oh, sure. Um, Philippians 3. Um, and yet, uh, Want to just give a, just a, a little bit of report um, on the Macintoshes. I'm kind of like the um, uh, the main mission guy uh, in contact with the Macintosh family. Um, and recently, of course, we know that they went there, and it's only they've only been there 14 months. It seems like they've been there three years, but they've only been there 14 months, and it's been such a roller coaster experience. But um, uh, we know that they had bought a uh, or built a, a new house, um, even while they had lived with us for the 18 months uh, that they lived with us. And um, but uh, they um, 
move back and they were going to be in the new house and um, uh, things were going to work out so well and Carrier, uh, he was going to work for Carrier and, and if it didn't work out with Carrier, he was going to be an engineer uh, with some company there that was going to basically pay the bills and he was still going to get involved in the church work. Well, we've seen how um, God has kind of stripped all that away and um, um, he uh, finally realized that God did not want him to be a, a, in any way, shape, or form uh, an engineer. Um, but he got linked up with the Regeneration Church, and many of you know this. Um, they took him in uh, to be an associate pastor. Um, he was going to uh, work for them for uh, two two days, and they were going to give him um, a, a day's day, two days salary, and um, um, and then he was going to have to supplement. Um, then the Baptist Union came along and said they were going to pick up a day, and so he had three and a quarter days salary, and he was going to be associate pastor with this church um, with the idea that uh, he was going to be on a team, leading a team that would um, um, uh, take over uh, a dying church called the Oakley Fellowship. Uh, there are a number, uh, just a few members of the um, uh, very old uh, a aging church. Um, but they, they wanted a, a Bible preacher, and uh, so um, the uh, Regeneration Church was going is ultimately the plan is to send a team there. Uh, Paul will be leading that team. And, uh, but it came to their realization that um, where they lived in, um, um, uh, can't think of the suburb that they live in, but um, uh, it was 30 minutes away from where the church was and where the Oakley ministry would be. And it just seemed like it wasn't working them having to make that trip and they weren't going to have the hospitality um, that they had in Upway um, that, they, uh, that they would have had had they lived closer into the city. And they recently, in the last just a uh, few weeks, decided that they wanted to go and um, rent a house closer to the city, and it's just within just um, a short distance of the Regeneration Church, right by the Oakley Church, and it's an older home. Um, and uh, the rent is actually uh, quite high in the city. Um, but they made the decision to lease out their new home and uh, so that they could um, take residence in the older home in the city and to where they could be more accessible to the um, the two churches that they're ministering there. Also, they'll be uh, in close proximity to a college that's there. Um, and already they have uh, uh, two Story of Hope uh, classes that they're um, uh, conducting, that Paul's conducting, and Sharon has always had her ladies' Bible study. But, um, you know, what a, in a, in a, just a, a human way of looking at it, they have a brand new house um, that uh, perhaps they're the first one. They were it's a custom built house. They planned it, and and we were um, uh, kind of in on that with them when they were planning the house, and and it was being built while they lived with us. But they found that it was hindering their ministry to be in the new house at least for now, and they have chosen to lease out the house, their new home so that they could live in the older home to do ministry. And for uh, and here's Paul that said, but what things were gain to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Um, ye doubtless I count all things but loss, but for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus our Lord, um, for whom I've suffered the loss of all things and do count them but the refuge. Um, rubbish that I may win Christ. Um, certainly, uh, Paul and Sharon have lived out that principle, and uh, this would not be the first time uh, that that example has has come up. Um, uh, we're so acquainted with this kind of um, sacrificial living in our church. I. Uh, 
Uh, today I have uh, Pastor Mike Davis sitting right next to me. Um, he's here um, being my technical support. Um, if I forget uh, uh, what I'm saying, he's also uh, ready to take up where I leave off. Um, uh, but anyways, um, you know, we all know Pastor Mike's position where that um, they were uh, had their sights on going to Ireland and they sold uh, so much of their possessions, almost sold their home, but by God's grace, um, they did not make that step quite. And then we realize how that the door shut uh, effectively in Ireland and they're now on uh, hold waiting to know exactly where to go. Um, and yet again, um, uh, they have not held on to things so tightly, um, uh, but that they would want to serve Christ, and if it meant the loss of those things, they were willing to serve Christ. Um, I, I think of Pastor Joe, uh, who normally is my sidekick for my technology, technological things, um, and uh, uh, Heidi and Joe had a chance to go to South Carolina to visit her uh, mom, and um, uh, they're having their anniversary there, and uh, they're having a family gathering there, and I'm glad they're able to get away, but we recognize that um, uh, they have lived a very sacrificial life as well, and uh, solely that they could win the um, uh, uh, the the pursuit of the ministry of Christ. Um, and, Quite honestly, I uh, was raised by parents who took that um, um, thought as well. Uh, my parents lived at a significantly uh, lower station in life just so they could be principal givers um, um, in the, the uh, work of Christ, and uh, which taught me uh, many of the principles of giving, which has been pretty much given to my, my children as well. And thank God for that. But... Um, you know, as we look at, by the way, let me just uh, mention this, and I, I want to, to just uh, mention this. I thank God for the uh, giving Christians, um, especially those in our church who hold the backbone of our church. Um, discussion was made um, when we first got into this um, uh, uh, house arrest uh that I like to call it, that we are in, and we were not able to go to church, and and um, comment was made, what is going to happen with the offerings, and you know, uh, I just said, I have a feeling that those who are the regular givers are going to regularly give, whether they are at church or not. Um, those of us who have had long-time experiences in giving, um, we would not give that, ever give up uh, the blessing of God on our finances. Um, uh, just because uh, uh, we weren't meeting in church. And um, um, I, I, I just know personally that um, um, God has been so faithful to us, and I certainly want to be faithful to him. And um, I, I'm sure most of our, our people who give um, understand that same thing. Um, and I thank God for that. Um, I want to say this, I, uh, as far as our missions giving, um, we came uh, last night to missions meeting with a thought that they were, we were really um, struggling in our missions giving. And um, in fact, I was actually uh, thinking that we were going to have to have a, a, a serious discussion as to um, how we can sustain our, our, our mission obligation. And yet, um, at the last minute, um, Brother Dan Golly uh, had mentioned that uh, this month um, uh, we were like just real shy of um, the having the mission um, uh, income as far as outgo uh, balance met, and we still have two weeks to give. And that means that our mission giving has been very consistent, and I thank God for that. And with this, I think of the Macintoshes, and I made an appeal um, a month ago uh, saying that uh, uh, we wanted to see if we could um, uh, supply at least another day for Paul Macintosh. And you know what? You guys, uh, uh, our church really has come through, which I, I knew they would. 
But the first month, they gave uh, $1,286 to the McIntoshes. That is, uh, definitely puts him into full-time ministry. Uh, this month so far, um, my understanding is $925 or um, <clears throat> Um, um, designated for uh, the Macintoshes, um, and uh, so it'll be well over a thousand dollars to 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 give them. And I trust that on a monthly basis we can be consistent with that. But I, I just thank God for uh, those who have known those principles. Um, and with this, I with the gifts in 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 um, the theme of our lesson tonight, what things were gain to me, these I counted loss for Christ. And for those who significant are significant givers, um, yes, you're, uh, you've made sacrifices in order to be the giver that you have, have been. And, um, um, uh, and yet I trust that the seriousness of your heart, where your treasure is as it's invested in eternal things, I trust that it has caused you to know Christ more. Um, but I want to give a different, uh, just another thought here. How do we handle loss? How do we handle loss? You know, uh, we all have periods of loss. Maybe there's a, a large repair bill, or maybe there's um, uh, uh, income tax uh, uh, where, where the taxes are raised. Um, maybe there's um, uh, some sort of a business loss. And, and we understand with this COVID experience, many small businesses um, have actually lost their business. And how do you deal with loss? Uh, recently, my wife and I were uh, told by uh, the town of Clay that they want to increase our taxes. And, and um, uh, we felt that there was uh, some miscommunication. And as we tried to approach them on it, they said, no, um, uh, this is the way it's going to be. And, um, you know, always our first response is, hey, wait a minute, this is unfair. And yet it's interesting that the uh, last three or four days um, uh, with uh, Jack and Isabella as we've been doing our family devotions, we've been talking about um, First Peter. And anybody who's uh, acquainted with First Peter, uh, the principle becomes loud and clear that um, uh, there's going to be times you suffer wrongfully. There's going to be times that you're going to be suffering for other people's mistake. Sometimes um, uh, uh, people who are malicious uh, uh, towards you and you're going to suffer there. And then uh, you realize that this is acceptable with God. And in fact, this is appointed by God. And um, uh, uh, years, a couple of years ago, I've learned that when I come to a crisis in my life, uh, one of the mantra verses that um, um, I uh, have just kept under tow is, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you. And so as um, uh, Lynn and I had uh, just gotten this news, um, I, I had to say, wait a minute, this is God's will. Everything that happens today is God's will. In everything, give thanks. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Oh, my goodness. How that diffuses any um, uh, responsibility or anger or whatever. Because this is what God wants us to go through. Why? Because he wants to test our faith. He wants to show himself strong. And if we never have a loss, we'll never know that he can cover that loss. And oh my goodness. Um, there will be so many times that, uh, especially those who are consistent in giving, something will come up, an emergency comes up, and that temptation, well, I need to reduce my giving uh, so that I can uh, meet these bills. And you know what? God says, you, you don't just want my faith. I can handle the bills. I, I'm more interested in you walking by faith. Um, it's the trial of your faith 
that's much more precious than gold that perishes. In fact, in my readings this uh, uh, week, I, I just happened to pass over uh, Matthew 19, where um, Christ is speaking to his disciples, and he says, um, those who give up um, lands or possessions or uh, relationships, anyone who gives up something for his name and the cause of Christ will be rewarded a hundredfold in glory. That's, that's amazing. That I may know Christ better. Sometimes God has to take those significant things out of our life that we can indeed be humbled and, and set back so that we can know Christ better. I'm still thrilled about the uh, uh, the passage that Pastor Matt closed his message with um, on Sunday morning, and it's out of uh, Second uh, Peter, and um, uh, grace and peace be multiplied by the knowledge of God and Christ Jesus our Lord. Grace and peace. Is that not what I want for my life? Is that not what you want for your life? And then he says, um, according as his divine power has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye may be partakers of the divine inheritance, or the divine nature, and uh, uh, having escaped the corruption in the world through loss. Oh my goodness, we want to know more of God. We want to know more of Christ. Um, quickly, he says, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness of God by faith, um, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering, um, being made conformable unto his death. Oh, that we can have the intimacy with Christ. And he continues, that um, if that by any means I may attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I've already attained, neither were already perfect, but I follow after that which for which um, I am apprehended also of Christ. Love that verse. I'm following after that calling that God is also pursuing me with that same calling. So what do we gain? I gain the righteousness of Christ. I gain the knowledge of Christ. I gain the calling of Christ. Listen, when you have a loss, consider this is a loss that God would give you that he could make you to know him better. And that's our passage for this Wednesday um, on uh, week nine or 10 of coronavirus. Um, trust that you have a blessed week um, and may the Lord bless you.